So here is what's new in the world of alcohol inks. And we say alcohol inks because alcohol inks really, there's a lot of different uh, facets to alcohol ink. Um, one, of course, are the alcohol pearls. And I'm excited that we are introducing six new colors of alcohol pearls. And I'll go through the colors, I'll talk about the demo, I'll talk about how these differ from alcohol inks and all of that. Um, these are sold in kits, right? So sets of three, as well as open stock. So I know some retailers actually sell by the color. So there's many different ways to get them. I often find that, you know, a kit is just easier. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to only use the colors that come in a kit. So you don't ever need to mark it. It's just how it's packaged. And so for this, uh, we just kind of sorted them with warm and cool. Now I'm going to go into properties of alcohol pearls in a minute when I talk about the demo, but let's just talk about the colors and how they play into the other alcohol pearls, right? So alcohol pearls are a little unique and hopefully this demo today is going to show you what makes them different and quite honestly, significantly different in some aspects to alcohol inks, but also how you can use them with alcohol ink because at its core, alcohol pearls are alcohol inks. They just have a pearl added to them uh, that is fused to the ink itself that flows with the ink itself. And when we first launched the pearls, these would be uh, the colors that we have. We launched uh, a wonderful palette of 12 colors. And quite honestly, we haven't added to the pearls in years. This was the original launch. Um, but as we've explored alcohol inks and we see how people are using them from card makers to painters to whatever, what I've learned is that many people really love uh, the ability to float out an intense color. And that is the addition here. So you can see these are the six new colors now making a palette of 18 in the alcohol inks. So I'm just going to go through and then I'll kind of pick up each new color to show you where it fit in and why we did it. And you can see, of course, uh, what makes them what makes them different. So these swatches are all done on Yupo, which is a synthetic paper. Uh, that is kind of my favorite go to paper when it comes to working with these, because I like that it can flow a little bit more than an alcohol ink cardstock, a glossy cardstock. So you can see right away the color you get the beautiful color of alcohol ink, but you also get that sheen of pearl. And when I talk about alcohol pearls, it's not a, it's not a glitter. It's not a, it's not a texture. It's very, very smooth. It's different than a mixative. I'll even compare how these differ from a pearl mixative. Um, but you can see that when the color floats, so does the pearl. The pearl remains connected to the colorant itself in alcohol pearls. So this color, this is enchanted. It's a beautiful pink, right? Then we have Intrigue. Intrigue is a little bit more of a kind of a magenta pink, but beautiful. And the pearls, although they kind of have a, a white sheen to them, they do take on the color of the actual alcohol ink, but they all have a, a very subtle reflective property. So it doesn't, it, it just, it pearlizes. You know, anytime you see pearlescent, it's still going to be kind of a white sheen, but it doesn't impact the color. Meaning you can see the color, you don't see white striations at this point, but you see that pearlized finish when the light hits it. That's what I love about this formulation. This, this is cool. This is deception, right? Beautiful red color has some great values, but you can see when it bleeds out, um, it has some, some much warmer, I would say undertones, beautiful, beautiful red, but wanted to add something even deeper. So this is the new intense, right? So intense is very cool because as you can see, it has a definitely like a mahogany vibe to it. So when you looked at this red, you know, initially it's like, oh, you can see all the darkness, but when you compare it to a deeper red, almost a, a burgundy color, you notice, wow, okay, I see what you mean. It's definitely much warmer and there's some brighter values to it. And so that's what's nice about adding the new intense, that deeper, deeper color in the mix. Then in the orange, we have Splendor, wonderful color. I love this, that it, it definitely bleeds out to some warmth yellows, right? It's a very delicious color. But then we have the new Scorch. So Scorch, kind of think of it as like, if you're a distress lover, uh, kind of crackling campfire-ish, meaning it has a definitely more rust into it, right? You can see some red into that orange, but it's nice because if you're, if you're introducing this color, you can achieve different values by whether you're using uh, Splendor or Scorch now because you're either gonna get that brighter orange or that deeper. But again, that pearl is in there. It's so, it's just, it's such a cool medium when you understand it. And that's what I hope uh, today you will understand a little bit more about them. Then we have Alchemy. Alchemy uh, has been part of the pearl line, a very uh, true, almost sunshine, lemonade kind of yellow, very vibrant, very beautiful. It does have a pearl. You can see that in there, but because this is such a bright color, obviously the pearls are much more reactive on something dark because you get more interference, but it's still a beautiful yellow. 
This is the new Radiant, and Radiant, wow, it's very, very cool. It kind of has uh, just almost an ochre value to it, right? But you can see that it still wicks to those beautiful shades of yellow, but the depth that you can get, you get much more of a Radiance in there. So it's a, it's a nice addition to the yellows. Yellows are just funny because when you work with, you know, if you're doing watercolor, obviously you can thin out a yellow to get different lighter uh, shades. Same thing with, with alcohol pearls, you can use blending solution to get these lighter. But when you need that intense yellow, it doesn't matter how much of this color you would put onto a surface, it's never going to deepen. And so that's why I think adding these new colors to the line, that's what we were going for, is to create a completely different tonal value uh, within the color itself. But man, Radiant, that's my jam right there. I do love it. It's kind of like a, I don't know, it's like a Dijon-y kind of mustard. Um, then we have Sublime. I love this. Sublime is just a beautiful chartreuse green. Um, all of these, and I'll, I'll even show how to do a swatch because it's very, very simple, uh, but it's just done with blending solution and the air blower just to create a cool pattern. But what I love about alcohol inks and alcohol pearls is that they still do all of the things that we love in an alcohol ink. They flow, they layer, they overlap, they can create veining if you choose, or they can completely flow out to uh, a nice translucent soft color, all right? Then the next color in green, and I'll pick this up as well. Uh, this is Envy, right? So that's a much deeper green, a little dirtier green, I would say, kind of peeled paint if you think in the world of distress. I often think everything is distress, even though these aren't. Um, but I kind of think of that color green. Again, I love the, the pearlescent in it, but you can see it also has a little bit of an olive vibe. Totally different shades of green. But if you're trying to get a true green, a grass green or something a little bit more vivid, it's very challenging to achieve with this unless you start playing around with adding blues and yellows and you know, that's the whole color wheel balance. And I'm, I'm really not that, <laughs> that successful when it comes to that. So that's why we wanted to add the new Elixir. Elixir, a very wicked green, a very cool green, a very true green, but has a lot of depth. And you can see when you compare these three, how uniquely different they are, right? It's about adding a color where you really couldn't achieve a tone, but look at that Elixir. You get the really rich, deep, greens but then even when it feathers out like i was saying you get more of that even grassy green in there but you get that wonderful pearl sheen just very subtle again this is not designed to be um, overly saturated with pearl or sparkly or textured in any way it was about creating a subtle pearl that you can put into your background and they can be used independently or they can be used with other colors of alcohol ink which we'll get into that in the demo then in the blues well we have Tranquil, very soft, very beautiful turquoise color. Nice for skies, nice for ocean, just beautiful background. Then we have Celestial, a little bit more of, I'm not gonna, probably like a, a red or blue. I wouldn't say that this is purple in any, in any way, but it definitely has uh, a unique vibe to it. Wouldn't even say it's periwinkle. I would say if you're, again, familiar with Distress, think Stormy Sky, right? That sort of blue where it definitely has a little bit more red into it, but you can achieve some nice depth with this color, especially if you start building it, you can see how dark and uh, moody that gets, but beautiful pearl. And then the new color here, what I really love is the new Divine. Love this blue. Divine is nice and bright, nice and vibrant. Look at that, that color, right? And I just wanna show it next to, like, cause if you see it next to Tranquil, you can see that it's more, <laughs> I. Gosh, I'm gonna confuse everyone if I keep saying distress. But if you're familiar with the palette, it's more like salty ocean, right? It's that uh, vivid blue versus a turquoise, but also a vivid blue that you can pair with this dirtier blue to make more of a, a denim kind of color. So I do love the new Divine. It is in fact Divine. Then in purple, we have Villainous, probably what inspired the Villainous Potion color name, but this Villainous is more of a, a true purple, you're right? A nice amethyst color, if you will. It's much brighter. So the new opulent purple, you could see really deep and dark. Probably this is closer to Villainous in the world of distress, but it's that nice black, dark purple. But they do wick similar, I will tell you that, right? If you compare these two, they wick similar, but different. Right? This is still gonna give you much deeper, dirtier undertones because it has uh, more black in it than this will. But it is nice that if you wanted that little punch of purple, especially if you're gonna mix it with, with blues or even if you're going to go back up and mix it with say Intrigue, 
uh, where you're adding a little bit of magenta, having that little bit of black is going to give you more depth than this will. Because this, even if you layer it, you can see here, it's still not going to be as dark uh, as this. So I do love the new opulent. And then of course, these have been part of the line, continue to be favorites. We have Smolder. Smolder, I'm just gonna tell you, it's mushroom. That's really what it was. It's a pearlized version uh, of mushroom. We did kind of play around with the colors a little bit, right? We added a little bit. Think, think of like mushroom meets frayed burlap, but that's what smolder is. And it's one of my favorites in the pearl. It just is, cause dang it, it's good. Uh, cause it could either play off as a gray or a brown. And then uh, we have mineral. Mineral of course is uh, very warm from a brown aspect. This, of course, could be paired with the blues, with the greens, with the rust. It's just nice, and that's been part of the line as well. So it is nice that we have, well, uh, now 18 colors of pearls to play around with, okay? Now, before I get into the demo as well, we have one other new, uh, and that is just this, this one. You know, to be honest, when we launched the alloys, I was very happy with the palette of alloy, but all along, I wanted six alloys. And we only launched five and that's because this one color was very challenging uh, to get to a point that i liked so this is the new rose alloy think of it as rose gold and if you're familiar with rose gold in the jewelry world you know it's weird it has a lot of moods right sometimes rose gold you'll see is more pink sometimes you might see it more yellow uh, but it's completely different than a copper or a brass or a bronze. Rose gold is rose gold. And until we could actually perfect that tone, to me, I was like, well, we'll just wait. You know, when we get it, we get it. And we finally got it. So the beauty, of course, of rose is that it just adds, it just has a different, well, a different look, a different vibe. So I'm just gonna go through real quick on the alloys just to show you as well. So alloys uh, typically are used with alcohol inks or alcohol pearls to create this wonderful metallic veining. For this swatch, I just use the alloys and blending solution uh, to get that look. They're not really designed this way, but for swatch purposes, you can at least see them. So this is Gilded. Um, Gilded has definitely much more of a, a wonderful gold reflective property. These have leafing metallics in them, so they're, they're quite unique. This is Sterling, right? Wonderful silver color. You can see that beautiful reflection in there. This is mined, so this is just a, a wonderful copper alloy. And alloys are different. They, because of the metallics, you can see they even shift a little different, right? Some are a little bit more chunkier and intense. This is all like one drop of alloy on this paper. So you can see one drop of sterling is obviously way more intense than uh, mine, but that's just, that's how it is. Uh, then we have statue. So statue is kind of like a bronze. So think of it as something a little bit a little bit more antiqued or dirtier than gilded, right? But certainly not as orange as mined. Okay, you can kind of see the colors there. Then we have foundry. So foundry is kind of platinum-ish, think of that. So foundry is different than sterling, just because sterling is going to be uh, much colder, much cleaner because it's just silver. And foundry just has a little bit of that, see that vintage kind of tinge to it. So think of it more of a platinum than a silver. So that's foundry. And then this is rose. I mean, you can see it's like, holy magic. See, oh, look at that heart right there. I just noticed that. I see it as a heart. That's beautiful. Um, so what I love about this, of course, with rose gold is, well, it's none of those, right? It's not a foundry. It's not sterling. It's not mined. It's not statue and it's not gilded. It's none of that. It had to be its own thing that it kind of has some gold properties, kind of has some brass properties, kind of has some silvery properties. It just depends on uh, where you look. And the, the bonus, of course, of alloys is that they are designed to be worked uh, with alcohol pearls or with the inks. And that, of course, will impact the color you see in the alloy, right? So seeing it just on black paper, it's really not doing it justice, but you can see, of course, that it is a different color. So that is the one uh, alloy that, well, it's been part of the the line since go, but it's finally released. So now we have six colors of alloy. All right. So let's get going. Let's get into the demo aspect. I'll do my best to, to answer questions as we go through. Uh, but of course, if I know I'm going to answer them, then hopefully I'll, I'll be able to figure that out. So these are just some colors where I just wanted to play around with the sets because sometimes people think like, oh, you can't use them together. You can, but these new uh, colors of alcohol pearls are very, very saturated, right? They're really, really rich and, and they cover a lot more area than 
the original colors because the original colors, well, they were lighter. They were supposed to be much softer colors, but as people became comfortable with pearls, it was time to really amp up the colors themselves. So I was just playing around with some colors there. Okay. So the inks themselves. Now, when you get started with ink, I'll kind of give you the, the little spiel. Alcohol inks, these are a flammable liquid. They are solvent based. So there are all types of warnings, uh, not only on the packaging, but on the bottles themselves. Pay attention to those, right? Make your own uh, choices. Be, be aware of that, right? Because uh, it does have, you know, harmful vapors if it's swallowed, well ventilated area, flammable. So follow along and all the safety information is right on the back of the packaging. Whenever you work with alcohol inks or pearls, work in a well ventilated area and work what, how it's comfortable for you. Everybody has their own beliefs on uh, safety when it comes to working with it, but well ventilated area is key. Some wear gloves, some wear masks, some wear goggles. You do you. But it is important to know that well ventilated area is the most important because we, we don't want those solvents just to hang out in the air. So in my studio, we have a window open, there's a vaulted ceiling. And to me, that works for me because um, that's just what I do. You need to do what's comfortable for you. Uh, storage tin. Um, another thing I want to point out, I'm pretty excited about this. So when we launched the alcohol ink storage tin, uh, I think this was in 2020 at the, I think it was the last creativation. Um, this was a tin that we were kind of playing around with before we started doing stackable tins for sprays. And so uh, many people said, oh my gosh, are you going to do a stackable version of this tin? Well, this tin was already produced, already tooled up, a lot of money to obviously tool up uh, metal. But I went back to Ranger right after the show and said, look, we got a lot of requests to do stackable. Well, they did a running change, which of course takes quite a while. Uh, and in the middle of last year, I would say mid 2021, the new stock came into Ranger and started shipping out to retailers. Um, for the stackable version of this tin. Now, what I need you to understand is that it doesn't have a different name. It doesn't have a different item number. It's nothing, nothing different. So if you are shopping for one and you're interested in that, you need to check with your retailer to make sure that they've either called out that it's stackable um, or they know that their inventory and what they're shipping is stackable, right? But here's how you can tell. So on the bottom of the tins, there's like kind of what I refer to as, as an innie and an Audi. Oh, I'll show you. All right. Um, let me just grab these. These are, these guys are, well, I'll just take these. I have, I have two because here's the other thing. Um, if you have the original tin, don't think you have to replace them all, right? Because if it's the original one, that's not stackable, you can still use it as the bottom tin because the big, the only difference is how this bottom of the tin is manufactured. So the original one you can see has that raised edge right? Meaning you can stick your, your finger in there and it has a raised channel. That's the original one. Okay. The new one, the stackable, this is like an Audi. So think like an Indian and Audi. The original has an any, uh, the, the new or revised stackable, the bottom, it doesn't have that raised edge. Actually the panel itself is raised. Can you see the difference? I'll hold them up so you can see that's a raised edge. That's a raised panel. And what that allows you to do is of course stack them on top of each other. So if you have the originals, that's fine. It just needs to be the one on the bottom because all of the new tins will stack and maybe you stack, maybe you don't stack, right? I don't really know, but if you do, it is nice to know that you can, um, all the ones that have been shipping since mid last year are now stackable. Uh, so we still have like one more tin in the works that will be coming out this year. And that's going to be the one for uh, paint and our distress reinkers. So that's exciting. I love the fact that Ranger continues to do these storage tins because I like that. And a shout out to Ranger for agreeing to do a running change on this because I, I prefer the, the stackable, but I also like to know that it didn't make what uh, you may have already purchased obsolete. It just means that, you know, you kind of have to do this. And we did right check there. with Simon and they have uh, all stackable. Absolutely. So, you know, if you shop at a local store, you can, I mean, I just kind of showed you how you can, you can check it out. Just look at the bottom and you're like, okay, if the panel the panel itself is raised, okay, that's the new one. And I think they even updated, not on this one, but I think some even say like stackable now, you know, they even did like another reorder because like I said, it's been out since the middle of last year, but in talking to him, like, Hey, when is that stackable ever happening? And they're like, Oh, it happened last year. Oh, good to know. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. It, it is good to know that uh, it's on the, you can do on the bottom. So in one, I have just my, um, my regular alcohol ink colors and some mixatives in this one. I have pearls and alloys. Now a couple of tips. If you know, as a maker that you're going to get all into pearls. Okay. Like let's say you're going to start your day and you're like, Hey, I want to do alcohol pearls. 
If you want to get them ready and you know you have your lids on because you put them on, you can put your tin on its side like that. You could essentially store them this way, but the responsibility is on you of whether you put your caps on tight or not, because if you don't, you could wake up to an absolute mess. But what I do is when I know I'm going to work with pearls, just as I'm getting my stuff out, you know, getting my Yupo, whatever, I'll just stand this up. And what that does is it essentially lays all the bottles on their side, which you're going to see me do through the demo. And what that will eventually do is the pearl itself wants to settle at the bottom. So anytime there is a liquid that has a pigment in it, whether it's alcohol pearl or alloy or mixative, right? Those require shaking because it's a combination of dye and pigment. The regular alcohol inks, okay, just an alcohol ink, these do not have any pigment, so these never need to be shaken. Alcohol inks don't need to be shaken, but the alcohol pearls, alloys, and mixatives do. And because it likes to settle on the bottom, there is a mixing ball in there. Now, sometimes that mixing ball gets stuck in the mud, right? Where you pick up the bottle and you shake it and you're like, I don't hear a mixing ball, it's stuck in the sludge. Or sometimes you've shaked the snot out of it and you've actually lodged that mixing ball up into the nib of the bottle, right? So if you don't hear a ball shaking, you have a couple of options. One, lay it on its side for a bit. That's going to get this pearl to actually move along this edge of the bottle. And that's going to make mixing it up much, much quicker, okay? Two, if that, you still don't have the mixing ball in there, give it a good thunk on the table and hopefully that will dislodge it from the nib itself, okay? And there has been the occasional time that, well, there's not a mixing ball at all, but that's pretty rare. All right, I'm just gonna take out all the colors because if you've seen any demos, you know that whatever I don't take out, I'm going to want. And I'll just take out the new rose alloy, because I'm gonna play with that one. So how exactly okay. do you shake the snot out of it? How do you, well, you know what I mean. You shake shake, like, <laughs> shake. Like, some people get so crazy. I mean, I've shaken a bottle so much that I've just actually fell out of my hands and it goes flying across. I've, I mean, I've got stories. There's been times I've used alcohol inks at shows and I don't put the lid on and I just start shaking it and then ink is everywhere. So there is all that. All right, so I'm just gonna like let these kind of hang out here for a bit and we'll talk about work surface. When you're working, if you work on a media mat, remove the nonstick craft mat because alcohol inks and alcohol pearls will stain that, but that's okay. If you don't mind it stained, it's not gonna change anything. But I, I just like to work on a uh, glass surface. It makes it easy cleanup. But first we're just gonna talk about pearls and what they are and how they use it because there are so many opinions out there uh, and many people that form an immediate opinion Sadly, they just don't understand it, and that is why they are not successful with it, okay? I'm not saying that's still gonna make you like them. You still may hate them, but there's a very important factor that you need to understand about alcohol pearls that make them different from alcohol inks of any kind. And that is that the alcohol pearls, because of their formulation, a formulation that contains a resin that is designed to fuse this pearl to this liquid, right? It's kind of the same technology we do with oxide because traditionally with alcohol ink and mix it is back in the day, whenever you put a dye in a pigment, they would always separate. They wanted to go away from each other. So the chemist figured out a way to, to bond this pearl to this ink. But in order to do that, those resins need to be used in a solvent that they're happy in. And that solvent is blending solution. And this is not an infomercial with blending solution. There's people that still think blending solution is just expensive rubbing alcohol and they could not be more wrong, but it is what it is. I'm not gonna try to convince anyone. It's just, you're gonna see it, okay? So blending solution is a solvent with a resin. That's why it has that weird yellowy color, okay? Because it's solvent and resin. It's essentially the base of alcohol ink and alcohol pearl in the Ranger world. That is the base of it. Okay, that's what makes these inks stick on non-porous surfaces, metal and glass and plastic and all of that, because of that amount of resin. Now, it doesn't have a lot of resin. Different alcohol inks have different resin content. Some are more sticky. Uh, some don't have a lot of resin and they kind of wash out. So there's a lot of different brands that can work together. However, when it comes to pearls, you need to use blending solution and not iso, isopropyl. There's, if you work with alcohol ink at all, you know that you can use 91% or higher isopropyl alcohol for alcohol inks, and it works beautifully, right? You get bigger flow, you see alcohol ink artists that allow this ink to move, whether it's with an airbrush or a blower. So if you're using alcohol ink, yes, you can use isopropyl, but you cannot use isopropyl with alcohol pearls. And here's why. I'll just show you. The proof will be there. So 
I have uh, my isopropyl in just a little needle tip bottle because I don't want to shake it out of the big thing, but I mean, I have it in many things because I do use isopropyl for a lot of things. I have it in a mini mister. I've colored the, the top of mine red, so I know this has isopropyl in it versus um, water, okay? But here's gonna be the big difference. So I'll take an alcohol ink blower. Now, if you're new to the world of alcohol inks in general, right? If you're, if you're not familiar with this at all, uh, definitely check out uh, my YouTube channel, check out the blog. There's a lot of videos. After this live, I'm gonna link on my blog post some other alcohol ink videos, which will show you basics, talk about UPO, all of those basic things. But right now, this is about the launch and how you can work with, um, with alcohol pearls. All right, so here's the alcohol pearl. This is Intrigue. Shake that up. My blending solution, I'm gonna open. Now I've talked about this again in many videos. The bottles of alcohol inks, alcohol pearls, blending solution, alloys, all of these needle uh, tip bottles, they're designed to be left open. Even though this is a solvent and is designed to dry in under 10 seconds, the bottle, as soon as you open it, kind of forms a vacuum and you'll see a tiny little drop of that medium stuck into that nib. That's what keeps the air from going back into the bottle. Now for these, because I shake them all the time, I always cap the pearls because every time I use them, I wanna give it a quick shakety shake, right? But the inks, if you've ever seen a demo where I'm using alcohol inks, I will leave them open until I'm finished using them, okay? Just because, so just so you understand why sometimes stuff is left open and sometimes I have the caps. Let me just, I'm gonna move some of these just off camera. They're just sitting on my table. They're probably gonna roll on the floor, but I just wanna give myself a little bit of room here. Okay, just so you guys can see a little bit better. So I'm gonna shake this up. So first I'm gonna start with some blending solution. I'm just gonna squeeze some right onto the Yupo. This is just regular Yupo. I'm gonna do just a couple of drips of this. So you can see right away, look at that beautiful flow that the pearl is doing. Before I even mix it around, I'll try to hold it up to the camera. Can you see that? Look at that, cool sparkly movements. This is on blending solution. So I can take the blower and the blower is really designed to kind of control the movement. Now, the longer you wait, the more that color is gonna soak in. So did you see that little drip uh, of pearl that started to go into the Yupo? Because there's blending solution on there, it's still blended out. But the longer you leave them sit there, that's when the color starts to kind of sink in. So to get different effects, right? Like on the swatch here, it simply has to do with how you choose to move this pearl. Meaning if you want something wispy, well, you can just blow that color out. You could use a hairdryer. We've talked about that, where if you have kind of a, a low speed dryer, you can even move that, get a much, much softer movement. You can almost create waves and ripples. There's artists um, that create flowers and roses. Some people use canned air. There's a lot of different ways to move color, but keep in mind that the more you move color with something like a hair dryer or something where you're gonna aerate the fumes, that's where you definitely wanna make sure you have a window open because you're, you're simply pushing those fumes up off the surface and into the air much quicker, okay? Now, while this is wet, you still have the ability to move it. And understanding this tool is also really key, right? Some people use this and they think they're taking blood pressure, right? Right, they're watching too many medical shows. And you can see uh, the skin in my hand. You can see how that just pushes. And what that's doing is the pressure that you're forcing out is going to cause that ink to actually push out. Now that could be a cool effect. It could be fireworks, it could be flowers, it could be all of that, but it also has a very splattering uh, pattern because you're pushing it from the center and you're blowing it out. If you want to create softer movement, the trick is to just gently squeeze the bulb. The thing about this is it has a much bigger schnozzle. That's, that's the right term. Okay. And a much bigger bulb than say uh, a marker spritzer, right? A marker spritzer, it, it will blow air, but the, the aperture, the hole is much finer. So when you do that, you're getting a pinpoint of air and that's what's creating these little explosions. This is designed that you can just gently blow and there's air coming out, but you don't see it rippling in my hand because it's essentially blowing that out. I'm not a fan of using a straw simply because it's, it's not safe to really be that close and potentially inhale uh, solvent from the surface. But I know some people do and they do it at a safe distance. And again, you do you. Don't judge somebody else for how they do what they do. You do you, all right? There's enough of that. So for this, this is pretty much, I mean, I kind of like how I let it air dry. Could I, could I add more to it? Absolutely. If I want to get more movement, I can go in, give this a quick shake. I can put some more blending solution on because it's always going to react with itself. I can put another drip of that color or it could be in a different color, but for the sake of this side by side, I'll stick with the same color. Uh, and just show you again that you can create that movement and you can point this from different directions. You do want to hold on to the paper though, because if you get air under the paper, see that? 
you could essentially launch this sucker and it could it could flip over on you but and maybe that's a cool effect that you want so a lot of different things and we're going to get into technique and pattern in the demo today as well but really this is about showing you the difference between blending solution with the pearls and isopropyl so here's isopropyl i'm going to put that down same way i did the blending solution shake up the same color and i'm going to drip this on okay now if you can see right away this is a completely different effect than what that did. Remember the first one had a wonderful striation. So now I'm just going to blow this out and look what happened. A hot mess. So what happens is isopropyl is not compatible with alcohol pearls because remember the pearl is designed to fuse to the ink. And when you add iso to this, instead of its main base, it makes that pearl clump together. Now I'll be honest, there's people that actually love, this effect of it. There are alcohol ink painters that want that little bit of grit and nuggety bits to go on the surface, okay? And if that's the case, you can certainly use it. Just know that that is what you're going to get. Those nuggets will dry and stick on the surface, but they will not dissolve. You can't go back with blending solution and fix it because once they bonded together, they're not going to come apart. So that's really important to know. There's people that, um, paint only with isopropyl and then they go and add pearls and they're like, these things are garbage because they, they get all chunky and clumpy. Well, it's not because of the product. It's just because they're not doing what you want them to do, but they weren't designed to do that, right? The, the whole system of alcohol inks were always designed to work with blending solution. Is isopropyl uh, a, a cool alternative, an inexpensive alternative? Yes, for certain painters, but even with alcohol inks, not pearls, isopropyl still has some pitfalls in what it does to color. So just so you know the difference, pearls with blending solution, well, they do what they do. They're supposed to blend, they create soft. Pearls with isopropyl, nuggety bits. Maybe that's cool, okay? But there's other things that you can also know about that. Let's say you did a background, and I'm just gonna dry this real quick. I just use a hair dryer just to make sure this layer is dry just so you can see. Let's say you were painting or doing a card and you're like, okay, Tim, but you know, I, I did this, but I want to put something else on there. I want to maybe put, maybe I want to put some color, right? Maybe I just want to add, I don't know, let's find something a little, maybe want to add yellow to this for whatever reason. Um, do I have to use blending solution now if I'm using ink? Well, once the pearl is on there and the pearl is dry, right? Cause remember this was pearl put into wet ISO. If we go in with the ink, can we take isopropyl over dry pearl and add color? This is just alcohol ink, right? And can we move these around? Is that going to ruin what I did? No. Okay. Because remember the pearls were applied with blending solution, created the movement, and now we could essentially layer isopropyl over the top and it's not going to make these clump because that resin in the blending solution already carried the pearl where it needed to go. So it is nice if you like to do paintings and layers and you think, well, gosh, then that's, I can't use alcohol pearl in my painting. Well, sure you can. It's just, if you're applying it or moving it, it needs to be done with blending solution. If you're layering it on top or under, you can use either or. Hopefully that makes sense, okay? That's just really important to understand. And look at that, it's beautiful because we're still getting a little bit of that color lift from the original pink that's in there. Cause remember this was just full on yellow. You can see on the end, um, how bright it was. So it's still doing what it's supposed to do, but it's not doing that. Does that make sense? Okay. Hopefully you guys understand that. Again, some people, uh, they're just quick to be little judgy McJudges out there. They are because they didn't understand it or they didn't care to learn about it. And instead they just wanted to form their opinion. Well, good for them. But there are things to understand about how products are formulated and what they're essentially formulated to do. So let's go in and just start playing around with, with backgrounds. And we'll do some things, we'll introduce alloys, we'll talk about all sorts of different things uh, when we're doing the background. But yeah, like if I was gonna do maybe a little bit of that smolder, right? That kind of mushroomy uh, pearl, this guy, right? Maybe I wanted to do this on a background. So let's say I already had a background of blue and I wanted some little brown nuggety bits. I might put ISO, I might put this on and blow it around and I know I'm gonna get that. You might like that as texture, right? So that's the thing to, to understand. Now can you put pearls on top? That's what Diane asked. Could you? Yes, but this would have to be dry, right? We would need to make sure that the ISO is dry before we applied the pearls, because if you apply pearl to wet ISO, that's what creates the breakdown. So as long as this is dry, then yes, you could put blending solution, pearl, and you can, you can continue to layer, okay? It's just really important to understand, all right? 
cool. So let's just play around with some backgrounds, shall we? There's a, there's just so many options. And that's why I said from a, from a, like a, a maker perspective, it's just fun to always explore with alcohol. And it's one of those mediums that you need to really play around with. I recently took a, I took a lesson, a, a Zoom lesson uh, with someone I follow on Instagram. I talk about her a lot, Manifest Jess, and she has a cool style and she teaches groups, she teaches one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and so I did a Zoom lesson. This is what I painted, by the way. I don't know if Jess is watching, but like, that's totally her style. It's, a, oh, hey, Jess, you're here. So see, I didn't even paint during the class. I was so enamored by watching her that I just like, the whole hour I soaked it in. But this is what I did after our lesson. It was very interesting to see how how different artists manipulate this medium. There is no right way to work with these inks. There isn't. The right way is actually using them, using them in your own way. And so her movement and skill and oh, it was absolutely inspiring. So I, this is, this was my first piece. It was, it was quite fun. Yeah. I learned, I learned a lot in that lesson. So thanks. Yeah. Jess, <laughs> that was so much fun, but you can do so many different things on different substrates as well. And I'm gonna get into the inks, but I wanna cover the substrates because it's often when I demo, so many people say, well, could I use it on this or this or this? Whatever I don't uh, name specifically, they ask. Essentially, you can use these on anything non-porous. That is what they're designed to do. If you try to use them on porous things, porous tile, porous paper, they will not flow. They're not designed to. They're designed to flow on a slick surface. Yupo is a great surface. Acetate, vellum, uh, ceramic tiles, if it's glazed, metal, glass, anything that's gonna have a coating. Uh, so this is one, this was actually the photo uh, that I did. This was one that I did for a demo uh, with Ranger a couple of weeks ago. But this is a whole deal in here. So this is alcohol ink, alcohol pearl. You can kind of see that little bit of smolder. There's the new rose uh, alloy because you can mix all of the alcohol ink line together. As long as you understand what to layer with which medium and how, you're good to go. And quite honestly, if you never use isopropyl and you only use blending solution, then you don't need to remember which is which. But again, it's not an infomercial for this, but it's just explaining that we launched this because we knew that this worked with this. That's it, okay? But yeah, you can do a lot of cool, fun things to get some great texture and movement uh, in with inks. Alloys and colors are great. The cool thing about an alloy, because we're gonna talk about those too, because we have the new rose alloy, these are designed to clump and they're very different than mixatives. Uh, alcohol ink mixatives, that's gonna be, I think I have some. Yeah, they're in here. I'll actually hold two. This is a mixative and this is an alloy. Different names because it's a different product. These were first in the line of alcohol inks because, well, we were still exploring and learning uh, with Ranger and the chemist as to what this line could do when we had a, a flammable liquid that we wanted to move around on a surface. But a mixative is designed to mix. It was always designed to mix in with the inks and create beautiful metallic patterns, almost agate-like. Um, but in the industry, a lot of people love that real rich, bold veining or marbling in metallic. And that is, that's really why we formulated alloys when we launched those, because these, unlike mixative, a completely different metal, right? This is more of a leafing metal, so you get much more sheen and shine, but it's also designed to clump, right? Mixatives mix, alloys clump. They like a party, they like to get together, right? They, but visually, just so you understand, they are completely different. So here is just a swatch. This is taking, I think this is probably monsoon, maybe, I don't know, it might just be monsoon, but I might have a little bit of denim in there. And this is showing a mixative, right? So here I just went in with mixative, tried to blow that around, and you can see that it's not really pearly, right? It has a little bit of metallic. I'll show you that mixative right here, okay? Because I wanted to play around with rose gold, because we do have a rose gold mixative, right? So this is rose gold mixative, and you can see how that color has a little bit of that beautiful subtlety it floats around, but unlike a pearl, it doesn't coat everything. It still, it still piles up, but it doesn't clump. This is the rose gold alloy, right? Can you see the difference in both of these? They're both rose gold and alloy clumps a mixative mixes. And can you use a mixative and an alloy? Yes. Can you use a mixative, an alloy, a pearl, and an ink? Yes. It just depends on what you want that medium to actually do right? Some people don't like these little chunks, right? Some people just want their background to be a little bit more uh, fluid and smoothie. 
that's great. But less is more. It's always good to go back and add stuff, but if you just throw everything down like a creative casserole and mix it up, not every casserole tastes good, remember that. And it's pretty impossible to pick out one ingredient once you mix a casserole, right? So remember that when you're doing inks. Add a little bit of time, a little bit of time, see what you get, then add a little bit more flavor. But don't just think you're gonna throw it all down there, give it a quick blast and off you go, okay? So I'll talk about how we work with them and what orders they do because they can create different effects depending on when you apply them and how you apply them and how you move them, right? Maybe it's an ink tool, maybe it's a hair dryer, uh, an air blower. It's fun to lay things in wet ink. This is just bubble wrap. This is also in one of the videos that I'll link on the blog. It's just, you can lay anything into wet ink and let it dry and it will create some cool patterns, right? Fun things to do even if you have some alloys in there. See, the fun thing about an alloy, because it, it clumps up, you don't really notice it at first until that light hits it. There's other substrates you can work on. There's other alcohol ink surfaces in the line. Um, there's actually quite a bit. So Yupo we do uh, in five by seven sheets, right? And it comes in white, translucent, white heavy stock. This is from Yupo. So if you see Yupo like in the art stores, it's the same exact company that does it for us. They just cut it to uh, what, what I deem is a manageable size more for card makers, but you could buy these in giant sheets, different weights, okay? The difference between heavy stock and regular is just the thickness of the Yupo. Translucent is translucent. These are not Yupo, this is a sparkle paper. It kind of looks glittery, but it's not a glittered cardstock because glittered cardstock, the inks won't move. This is actually coated. There's a coated metallic, kind of a brush metallic, and then there is black. This is a black matte. We also have Yupo uh, just in a, a couple of bigger sizes just in the basic stuff, right? So plain, heavy stock, and translucent, also an eight by 10 if you like to do bigger stuff. But I prefer to kind of cut it down. I always like to start bigger than what I want because I love to edit. I love to crop a background, okay? So this is Sparkle with alcohol ink. You can see that it's really beautiful to put the inks on there. I wouldn't recommend pearls on any of these specialty papers because they don't do anything. Meaning if you put pearl on Sparkle, it's not going to look pearly and sparkly. It's just gonna look Sparkle. So could you use it? Yes, but will you see a different effect? No, you see a different effect on regular paper. But yeah, isn't that beautiful? So fun to work on this because again, we're dealing with a coated paper that you can die cut. Here's the metallic. Metallic's really nice. So this is a great alternative if you don't have pearls and you wanna create a different effect with your ink colors. This is regular alcohol ink on brushed metallic uh, alcohol ink cardstock. And you can see that it almost looks pearlescent because you're seeing the reflection of that metallic paper. So it's a cool way to change up your inks and you get, because it's coated, you get a very similar movement than you would to Yupo. You really do because those inks like to float across. But it's fun to play around with papers. This is actually a craft stock. This is my ideology metallic craft stock. Well, you can see right away the difference. This one really soaks it in because it's not designed for alcohol ink. Whereas this one only soaked on the edges where the ink essentially like spilled over and went under, but it didn't really bleed through like this one did. But if you have metallic papers, can you alcohol ink them? Yes. You don't get as much movement, but you certainly get some cool coloring. Look at that. It's kind of like a, I don't know, like an anodized metal. It looks like rhodium, just cool colors. And this just started out as just a plain uh, metallic craft stock. But play around. That's the whole idea when it comes to these inks is play, play, and play. There's one other thing that I've talked about in uh, previous videos, but it's worth calling out because I mentioned this during uh, my Ranger uh, demo with the team. Alcohol inks are very misunderstood in the sense that people connect alcohol ink to Yupo or any synthetic paper. There's many other synthetic papers out there, right? From a lot of different companies, but a lot of like today's artists, if you will, will always connect an alcohol ink or a pearl to a synthetic paper and say, that's all you have to use. No, you can use it on canvas. You can use it on a lot of different things. You can even use it on chipboard or regular paper if you alter that. So this is just one of my Stampers Anonymous, uh, et cetera tags, just to show you, this is just made out of, you know, a paper pulp, like recycled paper. The ink that touches this, you can see it just soaks right in, just stains it because this is a porous substrate, it just goes in. But if you treat that surface with different mediums that you probably have in your craft space, you can change it, which means if you like to do art journaling, people go, well, gosh, you need to have a Yupo journal. No, we don't. Take a Dina journal, a dye journal, and gesso a page. Alcohol inks work on gesso. When the gesso is dry, it becomes a primed surface, and that's why most of the time when you see people using alcohol ink on canvas, it's a primed canvas. That gesso essentially seals the substrate, 
and allows the inks to move. And you could either stipple them on, stamping, stamping, or you can blow them on with the blower, right? They will move. You can also just use collage medium. Now, because the inks are translucent, if you use collage medium over brown, essentially they'll move, but it's still gonna show brown. So you might wanna take, I don't know, some type of paint or anything, and you want collage medium. The difference with collage medium though, is any kind of gel medium has a little bit of tooth to it. So you can see the intensity of color that collage medium does. So let's say you did a collage and you do alcohol ink, they'll move, but they really wanna soak into that substrate. Can you see that color? So it'll get movement, but you won't have that light source shining through because of the tooth of this. But it's still really cool if you want to alter something um, that maybe already has a print, put some collage medium on, and you could even brush on some alcohol ink if you didn't want it as intense. Acrylic paint, pretty standard. This is just distressed white acrylic paint. All right, nothing fancy about that. But look, you get a movement very similar to gesso. So you don't have gesso, could you use white acrylic paint? Absolutely, you could. Metallic, so this is metallic paint. So just like I showed you on that metallic piece of paper, if you have metallic paint, this happens to be silver, it's gonna be my light source, it's going to give me a very similar effect or similar background to that metallic paper, right? No difference in that. So you can see that each one is different and I recommend if you're gonna play around with this, first do this. It doesn't have to be on an etcetera tag, but make yourself a swatch. See how those look on the mediums that you have and then decide if that's going to work for you, right? That's important. All right, here we go. So let's just do some backgrounds, just kind of play around uh, with the color. We're gonna play around with some different colors of pearl. I definitely want to bring in some of the new colors, but I'm not gonna be afraid to throw in some of the, the older colors as well. Uh, let me get some celestial over here too. Okay. So we're just gonna shake these up. I just want to give them a quick mix first because then as I use them, I can just give it a, a much quicker mix before before I go, I'm just working on Yupo. This is just regular white Yupo, and we'll just play around. So first thing, just gonna put some blending solution. I don't need to hose it on. You could brush it on. Never spray blending solution, right? So if you are gonna uh, spray on a surface, maybe you've seen alcohol ink artists do that. That's fine, but don't spray blending solution. Not a good idea uh, to do, because again, that resin, that resin is, should not become airborne. Now you can apply these colors however you want. Just taught me that you can actually draw with inks. There's just so many things to do. Unbelievable. Um, but then I'm just gonna mix some of these. So I'm just gently going in, moving this around. And I am treating it like a brush. Because of the size of this bulb, if I slowly squeeze it, I can actually move that ink in, in an area, right? I can follow that. It's not just, it's not just CPR blasting, because that would do that, see? That wants to push everything out of the way. But if you just learn how to kind of control this, you can get some movement. You can decide, okay, I wanna mix this color a little bit. So I'm just giving little quick bursts. I mean, you can see that I'm just barely touching this bulb. I'm not squeezing it to where I touch my, my palm together. That's, that's what's really important to understand. Now, while the color is wet, it will allow you to easily introduce colors, right? Easily introduce color. If the ink is already dry, your introduction of color is a little different. So you have an option. We can move this around. We can see how this is moving. And to me, there is plenty of blending solution to move it. But if I wanted a little bit more movement or breakdown, I could introduce a little bit of blending solution, but right away, that's gonna try to break that up. Now, if you work with alcohol ink, another thing to remember is kind of let it show its magic, right? There, there is a balance of trying to control it because we do wanna control some of the movement but also there's a serendipitous nature of alcohol ink that as it spreads and as it flows, it does some really unique things on its own, okay? Because it's fluid, it, you could give it movement, right? So we could still pick that up and we can move any of that color as it is. If you didn't like something that is very saturated, you can go in and move this around with the blower and you could go in with a brush and you can move that around. There's a lot of tools that you can use to move that color around. But if you're happy with it, you can either let it air dry or again, you can take something with air and dry. So even on low, it's gonna be very sensitive to movement at first. But if you just watch it, once you see that it's not really moving anymore, could you fire this thing up a little bit? Sure. And we can completely dry it. Do you have to use a hair dryer? No. Like I said, you can let it dry, but I just, for the sake of time, I just wanna speed this up. That much blending solution, 
uh, maybe it would be dry in about five minutes. But that's fine. But I'm, if you've watched the demos, you know that I really challenge on coming back to something because I forget it. All right. But here's our background. So take a look at that. I mean, how beautiful is that? It's a, a wonderful, soft, subtle look. Now, with alcohol ink, because it is a resin, some people just hose it on there, right? They just go in and just, they drip, they, I don't know, they think they're just at, like adding spices to a stew and they're just, they're shaking this and shaking this and putting more blending solution and shaking. By the, if you put too many layers of any kind of ink, whether it's alcohol pearl or alcohol inks, all of these resins will build up on this plastic and it will be sticky. So people say, well, how do I get rid of the sticky? Stop using so much ink. That's really the, the solution because there are people that go in and add foil. So that's an option. You could, you could press foil onto that sticky resin and it will transfer foil and you'll get little metallic bits. Some people like that. But if you don't want to do that, the thing is, is like less is more. Do more movement with your solutions or your isopropyl instead of just continuing to add color and throwing it on there thinking that's going to change it. You'll have a lot more control and play with something loose like this because remember, I could go in with iso now and move this around even more and it's not going to clump like it did here because I've already done the movement. Or I could do blending solution to do the same thing. So if you didn't like that, you could go back in. But the challenge is, and I'm going to show you with a brush in a second, once this is dry, it becomes reactive, meaning instead of flowing like we first had when we were adding blending solution and we we're moving those colors, we were getting this to flow because it was all wet. Once it dries, it goes from blending to reactive. And this is what I mean. So let's just take, a, you could take a paintbrush for this or you could take a splatter brush, whatever you're comfortable doing, right? So if I just take some blending solution, I can put that right there on the mat. If I pick this up with a brush, yeah, I could go in and touch in an area, right? And that's, that's going to lift this. So some people go in and paint and they do all sorts of cool things and it will start to lift that. Or if you wanted an effect, you could take a splatter brush and you could just splatter this on. I like that because I, I just get control over where I do the splatter. But some people, like Jess, very good at uh, controlled splatter with a brush. I tend to always go the opposite direction. But here I can, I can do that with blending solution. Or if I wanted to do ISO, I could certainly do that. I don't want you to think that I'm like anti that because I'm not I'm just going to load up the brush. And again, I'm just pulling back from the middle, right? Like right here. I'm not running my fingers on the edges. You could, but the splatter brush is really designed that you can just, I always tell people like pluck it like a harp, you know, because everyone plays the harp. So, um, but see how I can just continue to go in and it's just going to add these little, these little speckly bits. I just love that. I love that effect or that reactive property. If you wanted to drip it on, could you? Yeah. So if I wanted to shake that on, you're going to see, well, it's going to react like that. And maybe you want to leave it like that. Or maybe you just want to go in and start adding more inks and kind of doing whatever it is you want to do. That's fine. It's very fun to just give yourself the permission to play. Permission to play, permission to play. If you think you're going to sit down and paint a masterpiece from Go, you're going to be disappointed or pleasantly surprised. But I would just wouldn't, just wouldn't base everything on that first experience because no matter how long you've used a medium, it's still predictably unpredictable. That's what I can say about alcohol inks. You're going to think it's going to do one thing or you have a, a certain level of, of expectation or comfort, but at the end of the day, it's still going to kind of react how it wants to do. Uh, alcohol inks and pearls are sensitive to weather, climate, uh, humidity, all sorts of things, right? So let's just do uh, another play here. If you wanted to create just a simple swatch uh, for pearls, take a little blending solution, do a little pile, Pick a color of pearl, right? Depends on how saturated you want. I would say one drop, maybe two max, right? Then you can go in and just kind of move this around just gently. What I like to do if I'm doing a swatch is just really understand the color, meaning uh, I often like to have that color really thin out so I can see its lightest value. And then I also like to make sure that there's a concentrated uh, bit of color. For this one, I want more actually, because I think I put there's a lot of blending solution in there because at the same time, if you're going to do a swatch, you want to make sure that you kind of have all, all different values of that color. So you can really appreciate that if you're going to ultimately choose it for the work. So see, how I got these weird three cells. They don't want to kind of mix. It's still wet. So I can still go with blending solution and that's going to just create that movement. So you're going to break down those barriers that the pearls kind of set up right away. Love this look, but see again, very easy to control. It's just use that tool. And it doesn't always have to be a, doesn't always have to be that. It can still be that like gentle squeeze. 
and movement. So see that? So if you want to create like a, a wisp or a pattern or go around a, a turn, you can still do that. Like I wanted to kind of outline that barrier because I love how those colors are building up right there. So instead of blowing in the middle of it, because that would spread it out, I'm just gently squeezing that and going around the inside edge. Once you, once you work with that more, honestly, you'll kind of play around um, that. So just gonna dry this. Again, I'm drying it with a hairdryer only for the sake of the demo. Normally I would set this aside on my table and move on to something else because it's still gonna, it's not gonna react a ton, but it's still gonna do something because that's what it's gonna do uh, as it dries. But I want you to see just the beauty of creating that swatch. So we can see the concentration of color and we can also see the wispiness uh, of a color, right? Quite fun. All right, let's play with some other backgrounds. Let's just kind of keep going. All right, love it, love it. Okay, so for this one, I'm gonna do kind of the whole deal. I'm gonna throw in some pearls, I'm gonna do alcohol inks, and I'm going to do um, a little bit of alloy just to kind of get everything mixed up. So I'm gonna get this mixative out of the way so I don't grab that by mistake. There's that alloy, that alloy. I'm gonna throw in some different colors. Let's do some scorch, do that. I'm gonna throw in a little bit, oh, I love, I love the new elixir. That's good. You know, I got to give me some smolder. And I think I'm going to do a little bit of tranquil and a touch of divine. Now that's a lot. Now, will I use all of these? Maybe not. I might grab a, a different color of my alcohol inks that are just off to the side over here. So if you see me grab something off to the side, it's good. Um, another thing I'll point out just real quick, if you're totally serious into alcohol inks, remember there are certain colors of ink and alloy that Ranger launched last year in these two ounce bottles. That was the, the answer to many artists that wanted essentially like a blending solution size bottle of colors. Uh, pearls do not come in this big size, just a select color of inks and uh, the white mixative and actually a couple of alloys as well. So there's a post on Ranger. It's just a good thing, especially even if you're not into painting, let's say you have a color. I have a couple, moss and monsoon, right? Those are my juju colors. They just like, they, they spark my little creative juju. I love them a lot. Um, so even if you weren't like, All right, I need to commit to the whole thing. If there's colors you use a lot, maybe you use red or pink or blue, it's good to have a two ounce of that because you're using it more than anything, right? All right, so let's take a little bit of blending solution. Just gonna start with that. We're gonna throw on a little bit of scorch. This is a nice kind of rusty color, okay? I'm gonna put on a little bit of MV. Mm, love it already. And we'll throw in some Tranquil. There we go. Perfect. And then we'll see what we get. Just gonna start kind of moving stuff around, right? Now, I know that there's people that just kind of really freak their freak on color theory, and that is fine. You do you, you do what's gonna be comfortable. Just know that if we wanna move something, Solution is going to help flow that. So see, I wanted to get that edge of green to fan out, right? Because I didn't like the way it dropped. But here, I love that transition of color. I love the mud, right? No surprise there. But if I kept going, I would essentially mix all this into mud. Well, I don't really want to do that, right? I like having some of that blue. But I'm going to keep playing um, while this is on there. The only thing to keep in mind, because we have wet pearl on a background, this would not be a good time to add ISO because that's going to react with that because it's still wet. So I'm going to use blending solution for pretty much most of this, right? Let's throw in some other little bits of surprise, right? So I'm going to put a little bit more solution on there. This is just alcohol ink now. We got some boysenberry, really intense purple, but it's nice. It's got some great reddish values to it. All right, I'm just going to flow that in there. Okay. And if I want some of that color off, a lot of times I'll even push that off the page, right? Just with the, the blower if I want that. Just kind of move that in. Don't freak your freak on this, guys. Just enjoy the process. It may work and it may be a hot mess. Who cares? It's fun. I think that's the other thing. It's like what happened to the creative fun of it and everyone just trying to be in their head about, well, what if I screw it up? If you screw it up, congratulations. That's awesome. That means it didn't turn out the way you intended, but that means maybe it's going to surprise you in a way that you weren't anticipating. Keep that in mind. So why am I choosing ink over pearl? Well, because you'll see in, in the finish thing, you know, where there's going to be ink, you're not gonna have any pearl, and where there's gonna be pearl, you're just gonna see pearl. So uh, it really just depends on how you want to, 
to create with this. But again, it's all about flow and float on this. Now, I'll talk about these because there's a lot of artists also that, that get, all, get all crazy, right? It's really fun to see it. Oh my gosh, I just looked up at the chat. Bryant is in here. Bryant Small, another, he's like, he's my muse when it comes to alcohol. I can't even touch it, but Bryant Small, he's here in the chat. You definitely want to check him out uh, on Instagram. This guy does massive paintings. I mean, this is nothing. This isn't even a swatch for him. Like his paintings, they're bigger than this entire table, but they're absolutely stunning. And he's got a wonderful Instagram feed and he sells his art and it's just, it's absolutely beautiful. So yeah, check it out. It's so cool to follow other artists. It's like, because it's still inspirational. I love to see how he plays with color, right? He plays with color and pattern like I've never seen. And he's got so many cool tips and tricks, but yeah. Oh, thanks for joining. Brian and Jess. Wow. This is like a party. So that's really cool. That's exciting. Uh, it's the truth, Brian. It's the truth. Okay. So this is one of the things that a lot of people I read in the groups where they just get all, I don't know, they get all up in their self. So first of all, if you're working on a media mat, here's a trick. Um, if you have a piece of Yupo, Yupo wants to grab onto the glass because, well, there's ink you saw seeped under there. Instead of picking it up, right, uh, with my fingers, because sometimes I'll do that and my finger will go into the paper, just get another piece of Yupo and just try to get under that corner and that will just release the surface tension so you can pick that up. Just a tip, all right? But you see those little, those little flecks in there, okay? What those are, just so you can see, is if you, if you watch the replay and you see the demo, you know that when I opened this ink, when I added some boysenberry, I opened it over my artwork, right? As I was playing, as most of us would do, right? Because you're getting that other color. But if you use alcohol inks, which you have, the tops of your bottles are gonna get that nice crusty bit. They just do because the ink wants to spit out and, and flow over this bottle. And so when I opened this bottle, some of those little nuggety bits, those crumbs, fell onto my ink that was wet and it started wicking out on these little drops. A lot of people assume that it's the ink that did it, right? They're like, oh, I've got, I've got clumps in my ink. Nah, you really didn't. It was the fact that you had clumps on your ink when you opened your ink on your paper. Me, I happen to like that. It's cool. Again, I believe in the whole serendipitous of that. But if you didn't want those or if you were experiencing those a lot, then just remember to open your inks off the side. And even when you're applying them, you want to be careful because if you have a lot of a lot of buildup and you're shaking them on, you could still be adding flakes to it. But just, I always want to explain like why that's happening. Okay, well, so far this this is kind of cool. I'm, I'm liking this. I kind of hate to, to overwork it. I may not even overwork this one anymore, but I do want to add a little bit of a splattery drips. So I'm going to take some blending solution on here, take my splatter brush, and I'm just going to just do that because I can get really close if I want little tiny bits, right? Or I can go in and really juice it up. So I'm just picking up the blending solution like as if you're sweeping up water, right? And then this one is going to be a little bit more of a harder flick. So can you hear that? So by doing that like harder, more intense flick, I'm getting bigger drops. Now, if you like the intensity, in other words, the contrast of the drip, dry it right away because the drips will essentially want to fade into the background. The blending solution wants to blend in with what it touched. If you want it to stop blending and actually stay uh, as dots or as drips, drying it real quick will create that effect. And of course, there's artists that go in and do that with a brush or, or whatever. So let me just dry this real quick, just for the sake of that. Um, so the splatter brush, there is an alcohol ink splatter brush and a distress splatter brush. They are exactly the same thing. Exactly, exactly, exactly the same. Um, they're just in two different packaging depending on uh, where they are in stores, right? Because sometimes people go, oh, you can't use that with alcohol, it'll eat it up. So um, it's the same brush. If you have a distress splatter brush, you can use it with this. I just wash it off with soap and water. Uh, it'll clean off that blending solution afterwards, all right? So this is our background and you can see that like, here's that beautiful flow of color, right? Remember when I just added the ink and that was just ink and look how that ink goes into the pearl. You see how like that section is really luminous because of the pearl? And then that doesn't have that, it's, it still has some, some sheen because it's Yupo, but you can see the reflective property, that luminous aspect really has to do with adding pearls. And you could keep going back in, really. If you didn't like this little chunkity bit, we could go back in with blending solution, rework it, all of that. But a lot of times, really, I'll just, I'll isolate that. Maybe I want to stamp on it. Maybe I want to stencil on it. Maybe I want to do lift ink. Oh my gosh, there's, there's so much that you can do to different backgrounds, but I promised you an alloy. So we're going to get in there with alloys too. Okay. 
let's say we just wanted to have a good time with the background first. I'm going to start with some blending solution actually on the mat, just right there on the glass. I'll throw in a little bit of scorch right into that blending solution. I'm also going to throw in a shot of divine. Okay. That's going to be a little deep because that's one of the new colors. And then I'm going to put some sublime it's going to be a little green. All right. So we're going to add a little bit more blending solution. Now I've got some purple there. See that little boysenberry? I'm going to throw a little blending solution there. It's going to pick that up. Just going to take some Yupo. Yupo doesn't have a right or wrong side. And I'm just going to drag through that. Okay. That's going to create a, a cool striation across the background. Now, because these are fluid, the more you go through, the more you're just going to turn into a hot, muddy mess. So keep that in mind. But as a foundation, it's a good start for me. It's just, a, it's a good start. So I'll just leave it like that. So while this is wet, right, you could pick it up with something else, but if you just go in with a paper towel, you'll be able to take off that blending solution. I'll talk about cleaning the media mat at the end. Um, but if I put the paper in there, it's going to dry and then it's just going to get it really, really sticky and challenging to work with. Okay. So let's just play around with some other colors onto this thing. And I'm going to introduce some rose alloy. Okay. So let's get this to dry. See, sometimes you just, you don't overthink the ink. You just kind of put that on there and yeah, it's about getting yourself a stack of paper and having zero expectation, okay? Because you can always go back to something. You can go back to this and completely rework it at any time. You can go back to that. But if you sit there and just dwell on one thing, it really takes the fun out of creative. We call it creative play for a reason. It should be play. So you, if you can just get over yourself in a sense of just get out of your head, cause we're all there. I do it. I mean, I, I'm saying it like it's an easy thing. It isn't, it isn't easy. It never is. But the more you do it and allow yourself that creative freedom, knowing you can go back or that you can edit this, or, I mean, haven't you ever made something and you hate it, but then you walk in the next morning and you see it and you're like, Hey, that's actually not, that not half bad because in the moment you had a different expectation. So you just really have to like, don't put your expectation on anything, not anyone else, and certainly not on your art, okay? So we're gonna take some rose, and I want this, whenever I use an alloy, I wanna put it in with something. I never wanna put alloy directly onto something dry because it, it has nothing to carry it. It really needs uh, some fluidity to move it. Now, because the alloys have a leafing metallic, even if you are using strictly isopropyl, which you can, you still need to introduce a little bit of blending solution because of that resin. That resin is going to help bond the alloy and keep it from fluming off. Fluming meaning if you touched it and you kept getting metallic coming off, it's because you need to have a little bit of blending solution in there uh, to help seal those metallics. Again, that's only if you're going to use isopropyl. You'll see that I kind of use a little bit of both. All right. So I'm going to add some of this over the top, quite a bit of it actually. And I'm even going to throw in some blending solution at the same time because they're compatible, yet in a weird way, they're, they're kind of not. And I'll take some alloy, okay? Quite a bit, just a, quite a few little drips, but still moving it. I don't want to put it in one central location. It's just something I don't want to do. And then I'll take some other, I'm looking for, oh, there we go. I'll take some Laguna. Laguna is going to be a, a beautiful color in there, just to help move that around. It's just an alcohol ink, right? Because we have ISO, now pearls are off the table for this one right? At least for right now. And then I'm just going to start moving this around, right? And I can carry this wherever I want this to go. I can move this around to whatever depths I want, but don't really don't freak your freak. Don't panic in uh, putting, putting more color down or changing your color scheme uh, altogether, right? I'm throwing on some, some raspberry, which is super, super intense, but I want to add that little punch of color in that area. If you see uh, things start to get a little muddy, well, push it off the edge, kick it out of the party. So here's what's going on with, um, with these guys, right? With this rose gold. I'll try to hold it up, although essentially try to leave it down. But can you see, there you go. You can see as it's flowing, you can spread this out. Okay. But watch what's happening. See how it wants to start to get back together. It, it likes to be together. It likes to clump. It likes to be part of the party. So it is important when you're working with this, uh, that you go in and you break up the party with some type of ink or solvent. It just depends on uh, what it is you're going for uh, in your ultimate effect. Okay. 
And if you get too much alloy or too much mixative, well, it is what it is. You get what you get and you don't throw a fit because there's no takesies backsies on this. You can't, I mean, yeah, you could wipe it off. Then it's just a total do over, but you have to be really careful when it comes to uh, how you use these colors uh, of the, the alloys because they're a pigment. They're full on pigment. They don't have any dye in them. And so often it'll just become a little bit oversaturated and that's okay. I'm just gonna show you how you don't have to worry about I'm going to leave the lid off of that. Um, you don't have to worry about just overworking this. You really can just play around because I never treat something as a finished masterpiece. <laughs> I just treat it as like creative play and what am I going to want to do? How am I going to want to experience that color uh, a little bit different? Okay. So if I go in now with dryer, that's going to allow me to break that up even more. If I turn this on high, I can push some of that to the edge. I can push some of that in. Okay, create that background. And then I'm still, because I'm a huge splatter person, because this is what I have right now. So I have a, it definitely has a rainbow vibe to it, which is interesting considering I pretty much threw every color imaginable on there. Um, but you can still go in and alter it. And I'll show you what I mean. Let me just go in and just douse it with some blending solution. And now I'm really just gonna start pretty aggressive with this, with this tool. Uh, just to push some of that out of the way and create some white space, right? Because again, I'm not looking at this entire thing as is. Now I'm kind of like into this one section. But by putting some blending solution on there and really going in, I, I like the power of this. Because remember what I said, if you, if you take blood pressure, you can actually push that out of the way. But look at how it identified uh, a much brighter space in that background now, right? So now I still see the color, but it's a little bit more radiant because it allows the light to shine through and I get a little bit more of those fragments. So the whole idea is to, to, to never give up on it. If, if it's not what you want it to be and you think like I had no doubt just to take that, hose it on and blast it out of the way. If you're indecisive about what to do, that's where you just set it aside, move on to the next one. You can always come back to it. This will always react with other solvents, whether it's pearl, blending solution, uh, isopropyl, alcohol inks will always react to other solvents indefinitely, even after they're dry. Uh, so just keep that in mind when you're, when you're working with these. But I kind of like this the way it is. Of course, uh, you know me, I'm gonna add some splatters because well, that's my, that's just what I like to do. I, I don't know why, I think, I think by splatters because it just fools the eye. <laughs> Maybe that's what it is. So I'm gonna throw that on, take that hair dryer real quick because I want those splatters to stay. Has a bit of a galaxy vibe to it. So I can hold this in one hand. Not really, I'm trying to, but just see, I'm just grabbing the middle of that. Just flicking that on. The only reason I'm drawing it is because I want those drips to, to appear wider, right? So now I just turned it. Wow, whole different, whole different perspective for the background. So what can you do with backgrounds? Well, there's a lot of things we can do with backgrounds. Let's do a little bit more uh, inking and work with the, the pearls. And then I'll give you some ideas of, of how to incorporate these. If you want to clean your glass mat, because maybe you're working with this and you, you want to kind of clean up the muck, the easiest, in my opinion, and the cheapest is just using hand sanitizer, okay? I use hand sanitizer because, well, it's solvent, it's alcohol-based, but it's thick. You can see that it's like a gel, and that will allow me to really go in, pearls especially, or alloys, anything with a pigment. It's just going to take a little bit more, I want to say elbow grease, you can hear it kind of squeaking, but the sanitizer is going to stay wet long enough to clean it up. If you just sprayed on some isopropyl or put some on, like one wipe and the alcohol is dry. So the sanitizer just gives you a little bit more cleaning. So that's what I do. And then essentially it is glass, so you can use glass cleaner on it when you're all when you're all done. Okay? All right, moving on. Let's go and let's do another one. Let's do another one. All right, this one I'm gonna go back to pearls because I just really want you guys to to appreciate and explore uh, the pearls. But this pearl, I'm also going to add a little bit of patina. I like that color. It doesn't exist in the pearls. Uh, maybe if these continue to, to be acceptable in the world of alcohol ink, we'll be able to get more colors. It's been a long time, right? Um, can you add splatters when the ink is already dry? Yes, because remember, alcohol inks are reactive indefinitely. So this one, long dry, reactive indefinitely. Could you use isopropyl or blending solution? Yes, either one. Okay. Go in with that and splatter. Now, the thing to remember is that if the inks are wetter 
you'll get more of a reactive, more of a reaction, kind of like distress. If they're dry, it's just going to take them a little bit longer to work through. So can you see those splatters, how it's starting to work through that pearl? These, when they were so reactive, it's because the ink was still a little bit on the wet side versus dry. But yes, and you could even, if you wanted a more intense, you could certainly go in with a brush and you can highlight or focus on one area because it will always lift. It will always be reactive, okay? So back on this one, we're gonna take some uh, blending solution. Nice. There we go. We're gonna take a little bit of opulent. That's a nice deep purple. I love how people are, you know, especially just other artists, how they have, they have no fear of, of color and that's the beauty of it, right? Just using as much ink or color as you want. So both of those were pearls that was tranquil and opulent. And then I'm just going to take some alcohol ink because I love uh, this particular color, right? So good. And it's just a nice, I don't know, it's kind of a tealish color, turquoise-ish color. Um, and we'll do the blower and I'll even show you the ink applicator tool because that was kind of the way that I used to work with this quite a bit. So I'm starting in the center. You don't have to start in the center. A lot of times you can uh, work from uh, the a side or whatever it is you want to do, but really play around with these colors and how you want to manipulate that. Again, you can, you can create a whole different striation with this depending on how you want to, to move this around. There is no right or wrong way. I'll say that again, because really the judging McJudges out there of judging how people use any medium, whether it's alcohol ink or, or acrylic paint or ink and saying, oh, you're doing that wrong or you're wasting this or this isn't good. You do you, just focus on that. How about that? All right. So with this, we're just gonna keep going. I just wanna add uh, some more play. I'm gonna add a, just a little bit of gilded. Gilded out of all the alloys. Man, this one's super intense. Uh, Mario, does the Ranger Heat tool, oh, she's asking you a question, Mario. Yeah, but I can't answer. Oh, okay. Does the Ranger Heat tool not move the ink as much as a hairdryer? That would be correct because the Ranger Heat tool uh, does not have a high fan speed, which is what I love about that. It's definitely more of a, for drying. So a hairdryer, well, when you dry hair, it, it's got a higher fan, so it's blowing, it's blowing that. So I prefer, uh, if I want movement, a hairdryer is gonna give you more movement. The, heat, the Ranger Heat tool will simply j just dry it. It won't, it won't give you a lot of movement. Okay, let's add some of that. I'm gonna throw in a little bit more Tranquil. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. See, just love the play, love the play. And just, just move around with this. Very, very satisfying to me, just kind of going in with that. Now, where is, there we are. I'm like, now where is my smolder? Smolder's gonna be uh, some nice, nice brown quality to it. And I'm okay with that. All right, some people aren't. I happen to love it. Uh, it's it's gonna have a very similar look to, uh, to an alloy in the sense of, you know, when you put gold on that, it has a much more tarnished look. But man, I just, I love the effect that this is going to ultimately give it, okay? Then we're gonna talk about just different ways that we can add uh, color to a background. So for the most part, I just used um, the air blower just to kind of move that around. But if you remember this, right, the ink tool. Now, when alcohol inks first came out, we used to have a rectangular tool with felt. Uh, this is the same mini tool. This is regular felt. We, Ranger just sells it already die cut for convenience, but if you didn't want, if you wanted to cut your own felt, uh, it's just, white felt, there's nothing special. Um, some people ask, can you use color felt? I used to just, you know, automatically go, oh yeah, no problem, but not all color felt is dyed the same. And some uh, colored felts, like the dye actually dissolves in the solvent. So just white felt is gonna be the easiest. But let's say we wanted to add some, some color to this. I'm gonna go in with a little bit of scorch. Again, this is, a, this is a pearl, and I'm gonna add it to the felt of that ink tool. Also take a little bit of mineral. I agree, Mel. Smolder is like, see how it just, it, it, when I first put it on there, you're like, oh, look at that. It looks like you drug it through the mud. But then you see how it like kind of went under there. It gave it a, a great undertone. We talk about it all the time in the alcohol world about mushroom as a color, the magical mushroom. It just does great things. And smolder is no different. It, it's, it seems to be kind of overpowering, but then it, it somehow just works its way into the magic. So I've got just pearl on here. Now, could I just stamp it out there? Yes, but I'm just gonna essentially stamp color right? So if I went and did that, it's going to put that right on the background. Mm, I don't really want that. I'm not kind of going for that. Now that you said, what do I think? I'm going to hold off on smaller. Ooh, I'll do a little radiant. Yeah. And you don't always have to put the same amount either. Okay. Meaning 
you can just add a little bit of one color. I obviously have more scorch uh, on there than mineral and radiant. But now I want to put blending solution over that. Why? Because I want my colors to actually go and blend into the background, right? And I'm going to start stamping them in there. Again, no fear putting that on there. We can always go back and change it. And I want to add a little bit more intensity of this. So I'm going to go in and drip some of this on. Don't be afraid of that when you're putting this on there. Ooh. Okay. And some people like that whole circular thing, you know, that's fine too. You can absolutely do that. So here's where things start to get interesting. And that is the reaction value. This is why again, having a hairdryer is pretty cool because I can start drying as I'm applying this. So I've got my hairdryer just on low, just pointing onto this. And can you see what's happening? Can you see that as I'm, and I'm just lightly tapping this, it's just slowly adding that color, but it is still reacting because as I said before, alcohol inks will always react with each other. Always, always, okay? Next, we're going to go in, let's go back to that Laguna. Okay, that's cool. I'm gonna put some of that color down on my mat. Take a little bit of blending solution. Don't need much, but I, I want that just to give me a little bit more fluidity. And then I'm gonna go in and just add some splatters of a color as well. Because if you wanna throw in some color, you can do that. You could drip it on, but if you want just splatters of that, you can do that as well. Then I'm just gonna get some, some real big, big splatters in there. Okay. So here's what I've got so far, and I'm far from done, but just to show you the effects that we're building, right? The ink tool gives you that ability to layer, and the ink tool isn't always this, right? There's people that just, when they use the ink tool, man, they're like, they're pounding out a steak. That's, yes, you can do that, but really the idea is just let it do its thing. If you don't have ink transferring off of that felt, we'll add more blending solution, right? Because we're using pearl or more isopropyl if you're using alcohol ink, right? Or either one, right? But what that's going to do is that's gonna just start applying it and mixing in with uh, the background and what you have. And the beauty of this, of course, is you never have to be done. You never have to be satisfied until you as the artist are done playing with it. So don't freak out. And, and everybody, again, is just gonna have a whole different view of, of what you should or how you should or shouldn't approach something. You know, when all else fails, Throw in some blend. There's nothing wrong with that. Throw in some blending solution. See where that's gonna get you, right? That might just be good just in the, the color itself. You never really know what that's going to do. So there you go. All right, kind of moving that around. Ah, uh, look, so see how I just kind of broke that up and just created kind of a whole new channel? Mm, I like that a lot. Okay. Because again, when I'm looking at this piece, I'm, I'm not looking at it as, a, as an actual picture or painting or anything. I'm just looking at it as, well, just something, something to play. Okay, let's go in. We're gonna add a little bit more color up here, add a little bit more blending solution, and there we go. Off we go with that. So we're gonna just throw some of that pearl over there. Ah, see. And I'm getting some interesting ripples. Can you guys see how this is starting to, to ripple depending on how it's, how it's positioned on there? You want to get some, a little bit more movement, blending solution. Again, I'm using blended solution, why? Because we're dealing with pearls this time, all right? Versus ISO. But see how I've kind of now isolated that little area and isolated that? So instead of it having like one track through, uh, through the work, which, eh, you know what, maybe that's what you wanted, you could do that. Okay, and I'm just, I'm doing that because I wanna create the striation. You see that? I knew that that ink was building up on the edges. And so by standing this up and just giving it a little tap, you see how I'm pulling that, I'm giving it movement. So not everything looks like a, a giant puddle. Again, it just depends on, on what you see and how you see it. All right. Nice. All right, love that. I love that outcome. So would I treat this as its own background? No, not necessarily. I might look at that and say, okay, I love that cropped area. So I'm gonna use that, I like that. To me, it has complete, two different complete looks, 
But hey, maybe you're doing this where you have something figured out where you want to add uh, an element. Maybe it's going to be a rub on or you're going to do some lifting through there. Can you lift alcohol pearls? You can um, with the alcohol lift ink, but they don't lift as well as just straight alcohol ink because remember, you're also lifting a pigment when it comes to pearls or alloys. You can do it. It just takes more than one layer. This is still wet on the top, but I'm going to let it kind of do its thing because I want this to wick into the background. But yeah, quite a lot of fun just to play around with just different ways that we can apply uh, inks and pearls, uh, using them together, using them separate. I think creating uh, just some different visual backgrounds are quite a lot of fun I and mean, quite, quite stunning to do. And what can you do with backgrounds? Well, there's a lot of things, right? Can you stamp on them? Can you emboss them? Yes, 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 you can do all of those. Let me just give you a couple of suggestions of what you can do with these backgrounds. So first I'm just going to use a little sanitizer, <laughs> clean off the glass. Just, I don't want to have to work in all that mess for no reason, all right? And glass cleaner really will always take off the rest of, you know, whatever residual stuff is there. It just makes it, makes it easy. So I do have a tin. I tell you, I always use the distress storage tin, the crayon one, uh, just for backgrounds because I love to play. And a lot of these really, I've done the demos on the blog because I just like to play, right? Bubble wrap or uh, that's done with resist spray where we've done resist spray over alcohol ink and then uh, washed it away. So now you actually have an underlying totally protected image, right? This is mono printing with a stencil because you can actually print four different times by just using a stencil and inks dripped on it and get completely different effects. This is all done at like the same time with the same stencil and the same kind of printing thing. Playing around with color, dripping your inks out and washing it with solution, creating really moody scenes. Don't be afraid of pitch black. It's really cool. Stamping on it, right? If you're going to stamp, I recommend uh, archival ink or something oil based because that likes to, to sit on top, but be careful because if you want to stamp on alcohol ink, it really only likes to transfer onto inks itself. It doesn't like to transfer over the metallics like alloy or mixative. It will stamp on pearl though, no, no problem. This is lift ink back here. So that's the white. So that's lift ink, that's archival. Uh, that's lift ink, right? Look at that background. That's a little lift ink and then some spray. Cause I'll show you with spraying too, if you like splatter, that's spray. Here's another one. This is just lift ink, uh, but this background was all black and a little bit of mushroom created like a cool negative, right? Just on Yupo. See, I'm super messy when it comes to working. I like that. This is translucent. So this one you can see has a little bit of light. So you could put it like a battery operated tea light or something behind it, tiny lights. That's a lift ink. There's lift ink with a stamp and a stencil and then stamped on the top. Just beautiful stuff. If you want something really bold and you're stamping over alcohol ink, um, you can use embossing. You can emboss on Yupo with your heat gun. Just be careful. This is synthetic. It's plastic. So First off, if I know I want to emboss, that's where I start working on the Yupo Heavy Stock because it's a little thicker, so it doesn't turn into lasagna as easily. Uh, but this is stamped. I like to stamp in archival, archival black, so I'll use black soot. Emboss with black embossing powder, right? Shake it off, heat emboss it. This is after I've alcohol inked, right? And when I emboss this, I'll hold the paper off the surface to allow the heat to pass through it. I talk about that a lot. Use a clothespin or something. Then, to get this to be matte, so it just looks like part of the background. After this is completely cooled, I uh, learned a trick from my friend, uh, Vicki Evans, just take a little bit of steel wool, go over that with a little steel wool and it takes off the shine of your embossing powder. So it makes it look matte, All right? Pretty cool. So a lot of different things that we can do, my gosh, with alcohol ink, but this is just a box of play, right? Because if you have no intention when you're creating, then you just get, you have that freedom to play. It, it's the fact that you have expectation. Let's take an old background out of here, actually. Um, we'll do this one. That looks good. And let's add a little spray to it and see what we get. Okay. So this is a mini mister with a little isopropyl in here. Remember, no blending solution. That's why I did a little red Sharpie on the, on the top just to know. See where you're pointing it. I'm going to keep my distance because a mini mister is mini and it. It likes to just create this, uh, this wonderful mist of, of whether it's water or or alcohol at this point. So I'm just gonna spray that on. See that, see that instant reaction? I'm gonna dry it again from, my, from a distance. Little mist, dry it, little mist, dry it. The reason I'm drying it is because I'm seeing uh, how much it's reacting and then I'm drying and that's stopping the reaction. So just by misting on a little bit of isopropyl over that background, look at the interest that it gave it. You see that? That little airbrush thing all the way around. 
See, something that you really can't achieve with a splatter brush. You could try, but you'll be splattering for days to create that. So that's pretty cool. I like that idea. Um, do you need to use anti-static, Mel asked, over the embossing? It's up to you. If you feel it and it feels sticky, then yes, I would use the anti-static over that to make sure that your powder doesn't stick to any of the resin. It certainly wouldn't hurt if you do that, um, you know, because sometimes depending on the ink, it could be stickier. But yeah, a little spray is cool. Here's some other things that I did, especially like thinking about, you know, Valentine's when I did this first swatch, because I was swatching out, well, I was swatching out these inks. Um, and I just started playing around with color blends of these pearls because I love the new Intense because I loved, well, how intense it was. And then I love the new Radiant because I told you it's kind of like a mustard. I'm like, what kind of blend will I get? Will I get something corally? So here I just took a piece of Yupo, started with my little swatch, like to cut it down. And then I love that little white space. And I thought, hang on, that's really a cool blend that would be great for Valentine's. Easy enough. So, you know. Take out your trusty dies. Old, new, doesn't matter. It could be a, a steel die. Thin lits will cut through Yupo. That's the other benefit of Yupo because it's synthetic paper. You can die cut Yupo, no problem, right? You don't need any, any special uh, pads or shims. It just cuts with normal cutting pads. But now I've got not only some great alcohol inked hearts, see, they've got like a little pearl sheen on them that I could use on a card, but I love this negative, this negative that I could also use uh, on a card front or you know, as you saw, they were layered on top. You can layer them together, but it's very cool to just do backgrounds that maybe you don't want to stamp on, get out your die cuts and die cut away. You can do full on backgrounds. I'll show you this. This is really cool. This one is just using that big background die, right? So I took that, that piece. You can see this is all done with pearls. See the purples and the blues, just beautiful background. Cut this out, right? Then I could take this, uh, layer it on something. So here I layered this on just a piece of the alcohol sparkle. It could be glittered cardstock, whatever you want to show through. But see, now I got like little glittery, sparkly hearts through my alcohol ink. And if you were doing a card, yeah, you can mat it on, on black. I always think that if you could use uh, black, it really makes your colors stand out. It doesn't always have to be, but just you can see how it just brings your eye right into those highlights when you frame it in black. And then look at this, just a whole pile of little, little confetti bits, right? Now, that's another thing. You could ink both sides of Yupo, and then if you die cut this, then you would have some type of confetti because I only inked one side, which means the other side is, is white. But if you did that ahead of time, you could have little, little sprinkly bits, whatever. So uh, someone's asking about just different adhesives and all that. The thing to remember is this is solvent, okay? So if you wanted to collage over this, you could use collage medium, right? Gel medium, because that's water-based. So it's not going to react. But if you do any type of solvent like glossy accents, right? Or even resist spray, it has a, a solvent in it. It would react with the ink. So if you're using a water-based medium like collage medium, you could collage over alcohol ink, no problem. You won't get, no, won't need anything. <laughs> Kath, you need to make another shaker. Oh, you know, those give me a little bit of anxiety. It's crazy. So just fun things. I mean, I, the whole idea of of adding some new products and why I think like, I love the fact that six new colors, right? Six new colors might be the first colors many of you even see, but six new colors have added enough interest to that palette of 12 to create totally unique blends because we get those hits of color that we really challenged to achieve before. And I think understanding how pearls play into the line and know that they will work if they're, if they're used properly, right? With blending solution, but the fact that you could layer on top of them once they're dry with a little ISO, it's all about understanding that. And I think that the, the creative industry needs more understanding and education and less, uh, yeah, you know, less just judging the product because it didn't do what it was never intended to do in the first place. I say that a lot because, well, I guess we hear it a lot. So I love that. I think that, you know, that rose, again, shout out to Ranger, uh, Steve the Chemist, because he's got so much patience because this is a different metallic than the mixative because people said well if you had rose gold mixative what took you so long for the alloy it's a whole different component it's a different metallic that does something completely different right so it wasn't about just taking that and then throwing it in this no it's about finding that type of metallic to do this that would coordinate with our already rose gold mixative so super pleased that we have that now to the line and it's it's like now it's the six that it should have always been so a lot of fun so many different tools so much uh gosh so much inspiration, really. That's what I think.